What's up Gear America Nation? This is Chris coming to you from the Gear America West Garage and today we're going to talk about acronyms. Welcome back. Acronyms? What's Chris talking about acronyms? What do acronyms have to do with recovery gear? Well, that's what I'm going to tell you today. And I get a lot of questions. People ask me all kinds of things. Oh, and by the way, if you have a question, you can email me directly at chris at gearamerica.com. It comes straight to me. I'm going to answer it. We can chat. That's what I do, and that's how we get things solved. But anyways, I digress. Acronyms. So today we're going to talk about different acronyms you see with our recovery gear, like MBS, MBC, WLL. I mean, there's a lot of them out there. MBL, SL, all these things. What do they all stand for? Well, we're making a little bit of a change on the website, and we're going to try to migrate all of those acronyms to two acronyms. It's going to be MBS and WLL. And what do those stand for? Minimum brake strength and working load limit. Now, what does that mean to you? because obviously there's some huge numbers. Like take this guy. Everybody knows the Mega Snatch Block and the huge numbers it's got. It has an MBS of 50,000 pounds and a WLL of 25,000 pounds. But, but what does that mean? All right, MBS is minimum brake strength. And what that is, is we get a batch of these guys we put them through some torture testing in a giant hydraulic machine and try to break them. And a huge sample of these goes into testing and research. And the minimum brake strength, or the MBS, is the lightest weight it takes to break one of these bad boys. That's 50,000 pounds. That's a monster. Now, workload limit is a little bit different. In the industry of recovery gear, as well as you know heavy duty rigging equipment, there's what's called a safety factor. And a safety factor is a fraction of the MBS, the minimum brake strength. And it can be a two to one, it can be a five to one. Our products have a safety factor from two to one all the way to six to one. And what that is, snatch block has a two to one safety factor. I'm gonna get all in the weeds here and a little bit scientific, but that's okay. You don't need to remember this part. Two to one safety factor is you take your minimum brake strength, you divide it by two, and that's your workload limit. The workload limit is the safest possible workload under normal conditions. So you take this bad boy that has a minimum brake strength of 50,000 pounds, you do a two to one safety factor, and you get a 25,000 pound workload limit. That means anything under 25,000 pounds, you're gonna have absolutely no issue. However, it does go up to a 50,000 pound minimum braking strength, but it's not recommended to go use it up that high. We put a lifetime replacement warranty on all of our gear because of these safety factors and ratings. Now, let's give you another example. The Uber Shackle. This is the bad boy of the shackle world. It has an 80,000 pound minimum brake strength. 80,000, that's huge. Now, I don't know about you, but this sucker weighs about 4,500 pounds. I'm gonna have to work really, really hard to even put a dent in this thing. So 80,000 pounds, but it also has a four to one safety factor. So math, math, math. So that's where it comes up with its 20,000 pound working load limit. Now, I got a 4,500 pound Jeep. Let's say I got a 6,000 pound diesel truck stuck in the mud and it's thick mud, and it's a lot of pull, and I got a 9,500 pound winch. Do the math. You're not gonna come up with enough to break something like this. We over-engineer, we overbuild, we extensively test so we can come up with the best MBS and WLL for the products that we sell. That's why we're crushing it in the industry. Now, what about our soft goods? Soft shackles, we love them. 45,000 pound braking strength. The synthetic rope companies, they give you an overall braking strength. They test these the same way. Put them in a big machine, tear them apart the best they can. But if you use this guy the correct way, closed loop system, put it in so you're locking in the knot like this, you're not doing it like this or like that. If you're using it the correct way, you're gonna have 45,000 pounds of capacity on this one. And that's why the website reflects it as 45,000 pound strength. There's no MBS or WLL. What about the straps? This sucker, three inch by 20 foot, 35,000 pound braking strength. There is a workload limit and a braking strength on the straps. They are on the website. They do it the same way as the rigging gear. So the only thing that you're gonna see a difference on 
is gonna be the kinetic recovery rope and the synthetic soft shackles. Every single one of our products goes through the same testing. We design it, we engineer it, we build it, we get a batch, we test it. And every batch of our products that we get still goes through testing. We wanna make sure you are getting the best products in the industry at Gear America. So everything's gonna have an MBS, minimum braking strength, and a WLL, a working load limit. Now, I know I'm gonna get a question, the guy's gonna be like, hey man, I got a 27,000 pound winch, I'm a 19,000 pound bulldozer, and this and that and the other, and if I use 17 snatch blocks and whatever, yeah, I'm sure you can overload it. I'm sure you can break this stuff, but under normal conditions, like I said, 4,500 pounds, that's a small thing. I don't care if it's your Toyota, your Jeep, your Chevy Silverado, your Dodge Diesel, big dually Cummins heavy monster with a 20,000 pound winch on it. The fact of the matter is, this is the gear that has the minimum braking strength and the working load limits that's gonna work for you. This might have been confusing, I apologize, but I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible. You can go to the website right now and you might see MBC on some stuff, which is minimum brake capacity. Like I said, we're gonna migrate those acronyms over to MBS and WLL so everything is crystal clear. So you've got your minimum braking strength, 50,000 pounds. Divide it by your safety factor, which is an industry standard for rigging gear. This is rigging gear. And you come up with your 25,000 pound working load limit. Oh my gosh, 25,000 pounds, are you ever gonna need that? Maybe, you never know, but we wanna provide the strongest, the safest, and the best recovery equipment out there. So that's it. That's the acronyms. Wasn't that difficult. But if you do have any questions, you can leave a comment below, or you can send me an email at chris at gearamerica.com, and I'm gonna get back to you. I know, it's a strange concept in today's day and age, but I actually read my email. Now, when you fire off those questions, I can't answer every possible scenario. I don't know how deep the mud hole is that the truck is stuck in, or the viscosity of the mud, or the departure angle of the mud hole, or maybe the Jeep that's climbing up the thing, busted an axle, got a rock stuck, and the incline, and this, that, and the other, and your winch capacity, and how many snatch blocks you're using, but, I do know we make killer equipment with a lifetime hassle-free replacement warranty, and it's gonna do the job. So if you have any questions, comments, and concerns, you can leave them below, but do me a favor, hit that like, hit that subscribe, and ring that bell. That way you're gonna get notified every time we come out with new tabletop tech specs, fun adventures, Epic Gear America recoveries. Oh, oh and that reminds me, I'm gonna put a link down below because if you have a fun trip that you went on or a recovery with Gear America, recovery gear, anything like that, I'll put a link in so you can send me the video and we'll put it up on YouTube. And if we use it, I'm gonna send you a free t-shirt. That's pretty awesome. So that's it, that's acronyms. Guys, thanks for tuning in, I appreciate you. But for now, from Gear America West, this is Chris signing off. And as always, off-road smart and tread lightly.